going to do tweets of October 22nd. Ready to go. It's always an honor to attempt to decode Trump tweets because when you have T clearance, that's the highest you're going to get. And did you check the trip code? The trip code has been checked and it is the Donald J. Trump. Okay, the reason that I grabbed this tweet from the 21st, we didn't get to it and it's a big deal. Um, Facebook has just stated that they are setting up a system to purge themselves of fake news. Does that mean CNN will finally be put out of business? Now, and before you answer this or, or to decode this, um, please, readers, listeners, I have a link in the description box, and you really want to go in here and grab the headline that I have about Nick Clegg, who uh, Thomas is going to talk about right now. We've got another Sir British turkey butt arriving on the scene, and we need everybody to know who he is. Well, this is a triple entendre. I mean, this guy is a stable genius, because what he's saying here is going to take... I could go on and on with this one tweet for hours. Okay, what's he really saying? He's making fun of CNN that almost collapsed recently and without the infusion of fake Facebook money, hundreds of millions, they probably would have collapsed. So he's always calling CNN uh, not only fake news, he's also saying that they're going to collapse, also the New York Times. Again, propped up by um, mobocracy money. You know, the Democrats, the Democrats. They're really just mob rule. I, w- I want to go back for a second about the Democrats. Remember, democracy was, in Greece, a good example uh, happened when they would get together and people would give speeches. And then at the end of the speeches, they would have a voice vote. And whichever group, the yeas or the nays or whatever you want to call them, Republicans, Democrats, whoever yelled the loudest, that's who won the day. Same thing still going on here in America. The Democrats yell the loudest, but pay any attention to what they're yelling and you will realize it's sheer insanity. CNN is a perfect example of that. It's completely a democratic, a democrat group uh, that is run by, of course, people who have the intent to subvert America and sell it out to the globalists. Now, the triple entendre is the following. When he says that if they purge themselves of fake news, of course, Facebook would have to purge themselves of CNN, who they just invested in. But Facebook has invested in a number of shows that are propaganda in in different um, media stations and networks. So what is really happening here? He's basically laughing at them because recently they just hired the person who's going to come and take over Facebook as we uh, basically ramp up for the 2020 elections. And so who did they hire? One of the biggest propagandists for Brexit in Britain. His name is Lord... Nick, Nick Clegg. Clegg. And you know what? It's just, I, I hope folks are really awake to this, Thomas, because we have a British invasion as one as, as well as on the southern border. And the British have never left. these, And I call them Sir British Turkey Butts for a reason. I'm just getting tired of them. And you need to, if you're, if you're out there listening, these are names you need to know. Joffrey Patty, Richard Dearlove, Mark Malik Brown, and now we add Nick Clegg. And it is the perfect example of the way that the Queen's um, Privy Council is infiltrated by George Soros and the Atlantic Council. Recently, before good old Nick showed up, he had to show up because they had put in the program for the Atlantic Council called the Digital Forensic Research Laboratory. This is the group that we call the Ministry of Truth in European Union in all those countries. These are the people who are making sure that there's going to be another Brexit vote. Why? Because George Soros put 10,000 people on the street in Britain going door to door, paying people to say they wanted another Brexit vote. Though, in fact, the people were very clear. They want out of the European Union. So these are the same buddies working with George Soros, the Atlantic Council. They've come over, they've taken over Google, and now they've sent the second man in charge over there in England, who is now, of course, retired from that position. But Lord Nick Clegg couldn't be any more of a propagandist and a a direct uh, step and fetch boy for the Queen's Privy Council. Well, our friends over at the Americans for Innovation have had their research teams in. They're digging through all the files and what they've uncovered about Nick 
Clegg is pretty interesting. And so we're going to be getting with Michael in the next few audios when we review that. But I, I encourage you to go and start getting a preliminary look at who he is. But I'm going to take issue with you, Thomas infiltrated, that the Queen's Privy Council has been infiltrated by George Soros. I say no. If they were infiltrated, it almost makes them look like they were victims of George Soros. I say that the Queen protects George Soros, and it is the Queen that we need to take down. The the Brits, I mean, their paperwork shows that they still have control of America. Now, good luck telling the average Bubba here in America that you are ruled by the Queen. Lord Mark Malik Brown was one of the founding members of the Open Society Foundation of George Soros, so they are bunk buddies way, way back. And who is on whose side? I think Soros is kind of on his own side now, but he was on the rogue CIA side for America. And he is still on, and in a minute, I'm going to tell you something that is just going to be sad. It's so, so well, sad. I don't want to wait for a minute. What's no, sad? It, it's, it's, a, it's another tweet. But the point is, is that Brexit, there'll be another vote. And that's because the Atlantic Council's group, the Digital Forensic Research Laboratory, is controlling all of the social media. And now they've come to roost here in America through a $1.5 billion donation between George Soros and the Atlantic Council. Now, let me just say, the Atlantic Council is the group that is the propaganda arm that says Russia is guilty for every single problem on the face of the earth. And all we need is a stronger NATO, a North Atlantic Treaty Organization, to war against Russia. But look who's in the Atlantic Council. Dmitry Alperovich. Hello? The the, the Russian spy who actually implanted the things in the Democratic National Committee's server? Alexandra Chalupa? On the Democratic National Committee itself, the person who helped Victoria Newland go after Paul Manafort, we have we have actually Chinese representation on the Atlantic Council, many representation from Turkey, from many many radical Islamic fascist countries that are on the Atlantic Council. The Atlantic Council is pure evil, folks. There is no good ever coming out of the Atlantic Council, and every single person who is in it knows that, and they know that they are nothing more than the propaganda arm to cover up for the real crimes going on beneath the surface and blame them on Russia. Well, now, if Clegg comes over here to work with Mark Zuckerberg and uh, Sheryl Sandberg, two traitors of America, would that be considered foreign election interference, meddling, or whatever you want to have it? Absolutely. At this point, everything Eric Schmidt does is meddling. No, I'm t- I didn't say Eric Schmidt. I'm I was talking about Facebook. Well, I'm talking about Facebook, Google, YouTube, all of them. All of the social media, just in what they're doing. Because they have now become political machines. And they need to admit it. And at the end of every single thing they do, including every single search on Google, it needs to say, paid for by the Democratic Party. And if you don't do that then this is election rigging par excellence. They already know the algorithms were changed. They already know Facebook is controlled by the Truth Ministry, the Digital Forensic Research Laboratory. They know George Soros has bought and paid for the meddling of these elections. They know that he has super PACs that come out at the end with subliminal messages that affect people who watch television. It's all very, very well known. So what we need to do is we need to go out and we need to arrest George Soros. And we'll get to why and the proof that we have of that in just a moment and the reason why we finally have it so that the Americans can arrest this man they used to work with, with the rogue CIA, until he went completely megalomania on them. And now nothing seems to be able to stop him. Well, let's not forget the tweet of the other day where Trump is calling out this election rigging stuff. And we're on note. Sheryl Sandberg, darling, you're on notice. If you continue with your election rigging with this foreign influence, you and Zuckerberg. Amen. All right. October 22nd. Sadly, it looks like Mexico's police and military are unable to stop the caravan headed to the southern border of the United States. Criminals and unknown Middle Easterners are mixed in. I have alerted Border Patrol and military that this is a national emergency. Must change laws. I'm just going to add to what he says. Every single person in that caravan is a criminal. Bar none. Because they did not apply for asylum. Not a one of them. 10,000 of them, supposedly. 
They have been begged by the Mexicans to apply for asylum. They will not. That means every border they crossed, including the southern Mexico border, and if they are Mexicans, uh, that's okay. When they cross our border, they're all criminals. Not a one of them is a migrant. Now let's take a look at what George Soros did with this migrant invasion of Europe. As we look at it now, years later, uh, 24 million invaders and less than 2% of them work. These are not migrants. This is not a migration. This is an invasion. They do not come to work. They come to steal. They come to rape. They come to take social services. And what we need to do is exactly what Trump has done. He's already put out an executive order saying that we are in a national emergency. Now he's going to have to call the National Guard out. I suggest that he arrest all of them, put them in FEMA camps, and then take them on boats back to the countries they came from. And if the countries do not take them, end all relationships, not just U.S. foreign aid, not just U.S. aid. No, that's the, that's a drop in the bucket. We need to end diplomatic relations with any country that allows these criminals coming straight out of their prisons. That's where most of these people come from, and they're filtered in with hundreds of ISIS, hundreds of Hezbollah, and Al-Qaeda. We know that this is the mechanism because we've seen thousands of these ISIS warriors, Hezbollah warriors, come into Europe under the guise of these migrant caravans using false IDs. Some of them literally thousands of, thousands of, of these Islamic fascists using the same name, the same passport, and yet we're going to call them migrants looking for work and that we should have compassion well, on them? Well, they're invaders, and they're George Soros's army. You have to look at them in a different way. I know they have women and children mixed in, but as a group, they are an invading army. And I know you say that we need to arrest them and put them in FEMA camps, but you know, I read a lot from people in comments that as they, as the young, uh, healthy men uh, cross over the wall or however they cross over, they need to be shot as soon as they get on... American soil. And you say that that's too drastic and we can't do it. But Thomas, this is an invasion of America. But let's remember that it is aided by El Salvador. It's aided by Honduras. It's aided by Guatemala. It's aided by Mexico. They are now our enemies. What What don't people understand about this? No country allows an invading supposed migration to go through their country and not stop them to go into the another country that's supposedly your friend. Well, they're that picking we have. up steam in Mexico. They're picking up more. I've heard it could be as high as 50,000 by the time this thing is finished. I'm glad this happened now. First off, our trade deal with them is done. Now, when he puts sanctions on them, it's going to hurt them so bad, and he's going to put sanctions on them. If Mexico doesn't stop them in Mexico and send them back, as they should have at their own southern border, where they built a fantastic wall, by the way, to protect themselves from this, but they did you see the pathetic fence they had on the on the bridge okay that shows that they're just not thinking they're spending more money on their drug cartels than they are on their southern border fence which is now basically created criminals of every single person in that caravan okay each and every one of them is a criminal times two, three, four, it just depends. Many of them are directly from their prisons. They can't hold them in prison any longer, and then they release them, and others are being paid. Now, this is the good, this is the really thick stuff, okay? But we might as well... Have we gotten to the part where you're going to tell me? Yeah, this okay. is it. Or okay. should I read the other tweet? No, we, we have um, we have seen that these people started off with being paid in cash, women and children first, but who was really in line first? Fighting age men who are not even from the countries in many cases that they say they're from and they have no ID. So they're being paid cash to start. Now, mainstream media, you show us these pictures, you don't show us anything. You're lying, stinking pieces of yellow journalism that should be flushed down the toilet. Why? Show me one single picture. One of the migrants invading Europe. They're not migrants. Or the migrants invading America They're through Mexico invaders. where they are stopped and eating. And what you will see is what I told you before. The migrants 
The invasion of the European Union was because George Soros, under false flags, took those boats to those places and encouraged the people to come there, gave them a ride to Europe and dumped them off. And they were actually flying under false flag and he was running a, a fake ships under false flag, running them out of Hamburg with Angela Merkel's permission. This has been found out. Mark my words. Can I please have a picture of where they, what they're doing at night? This supposed migrant caravan, which in fact are Soros invaders. They're probably checking in at the Holiday Inn. Who is feeding them? Somebody's paying this. They don't have food and water with them. It's exactly like the invaders of Europe. George Soros, one day walk from each along the way, and it takes uh, it's going to take day it's going to take weeks and weeks for them to get here in this walk. He gives them food and water for the day. All they have is day packs. Look at them; they don't even have their possessions on them. This is completely. These are paid political actors, most of whom are criminals, all of the women will be raped by the time they cross the American border, if they do cross the American border. That is a lawless group of criminals. And that's the reason they don't show you hardly any pictures of them. Because George Soros provides the food and water for them along the way, gives them cash, pays off the politicians, pays... Why do you think they called the Mexican military out and the Mexican law enforcement out And then they just went home after a while because George Soros paid off their bosses. They're not attempting to stop this caravan. They didn't attempt to stop the first one. They have no intention of stopping it. Here's what's really going on. We are at war with Mexico, period. Our southern border kills more people. Actually, our southern border is more dangerous than any country in the world at this moment. Unbelievable. More dangerous than Israel being bombed every single day more dangerous than Palestine, more dangerous than Syria. Our southern border kills more people with Mexico and more drugs and and Chinese fentanyl brought across the border that is literally 10 to 100 times the potency it's supposed to be, so you die on the first pill? And then the American media does not report it. You might get an article here and there, but they are turning a blind eye to this because they too are the enemy. The rogue CIA has been taking the opium, turning it into heroin in government approved, sponsored labs in Afghanistan for a long, long time and bringing it across our southern border into this country. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. The FBI knows that. The CIA knows that. Everyone knows that. The border guards know that. Look at the news. It's in the news every day, folks. It's now every single day. I've been yelling about this. It used to be once a week, two, three times a week, every day. There are deaths on our southern border every day, drugs coming across every day, human trafficking every day, and it started off with that stinking Obama. And when he said, come one, come all, give me your unaccompanied minors. By the way, no female unaccompanied minor made it to that border without being raped. And then they were trafficked, human trafficked afterwards, and now we can't find those children. Thank you, Obama. You not only killed two million people with bombs in seven countries and bombed every single day of your eight years in office, which no other president has ever done, but you've also begged people to come to this country so that you could kill them. You are a serial murderer. This is a well-known fact. These are not exaggerations. The unaccompanied minors, where are they? Please show me where they are. People have gone out looking for them, just like the 100,000 Uh, refugees that he allowed into the United Nations, which was being, of course, uh, then uh, bankrolled by U.S. taxpayers and given to mostly the Catholic Church and the United Nations and basically to Turkey and to Syria. You know, our tax dollars even go... (laughs) It's unbelievable. Our tax dollars went to the United Nations, which went to Erdogan, who holds those refugees in Turkey, and he gives a part of every dollar he gets to the king of Syria. So the king of Syria, who started this war on purpose, who was the father of of ISIS, ISIL, and the supporter of Al-Qaeda, is being paid by U.S. taxpayers for every single Obama refugee that came in out of Turkey. Now, mind you, they weren't just Syrians. Those were Muslim refugees from all over the world who had gotten to Turkey, who then snuck in under the auspices of being migrants coming to work in Europe. As I said, last count that I saw, a little under 2% 
of the 24 million invaders of Europe are working at this moment. The rest are all killing all social services in all countries that have allowed them in any significant numbers. And anyone who researches this will know it. This is not any kind of hate talk. This is just simple reality. And if you think the criminals coming across our southern border are what the Democrats tell you, the demon rats tell you, that they're innocent mothers who are bringing their children? No, look, those are criminal women and those aren't their children. Take a close look. It doesn't take much. They separate them from those people because those are their traffickers. They're not even their parents. Why do you think 99.9% of them that reach the southern border of America come with no papers? None, zero. You don't know their name. You don't know what country they're from. How could this be, Obama? Why did you break down the laws so that you begged an invasion of America? Well, that's because he was there to destroy America. So this leads to the tweet that, uh, the next one. Every time you see a caravan or people illegally coming or attempting to come into our country illegally, think of and blame the Democrats for not giving us the votes to change our pathetic immigration laws. Remember the midterms. So unfair to those who come in legally. And worse, it is so unfair to the families whose children and family members have been murdered by these thugs. We have the worst immigration laws of any country in the world. Look at Canada. Canada took 15,000 refugees. Many of them were simply illegals in America that got scared and went across the border to have, you know, a better Canadian life. Guess what they did with them? They locked them up in a stadium and then they sent them back home. We have the worst immigration laws in the world because the Democrats... On purpose. On purpose because... Democrats, demon rats, believe that illegal aliens, there are now 22 million of them, exactly as I told you. Actually, there's more, but I guaranteed you that the minimum was 22 million. Now the FBI core document, the IRS and everybody else has come out and said yes. And guess what? Guess how many of those 22 million illegal criminals, aliens in our country that all need to be deported, guess how many of them have registered to work? Oh, how many? 678,000 out of 22 million. They're DACA. And the reason we, and, and by the way, some of those DACA have stolen social security numbers of dead people and everything else so that they could work. And we know this because these are the ones who are registered. And we had pointed out that there's really, for DACA, no, there's 2.5 million people in DACA. 678,000 of them have work permits. That was what it was all about. So if you think that these folks are coming up in this caravan to work here because of all the good jobs here, you are so dead wrong. What is the percentage of that? That's, that's like 0.5% of the 22 million in this country work. So don't tell me that that is the... No, they come to vote for Democrats so that they can get the very things that now they can't get. When Obama started his free handouts, he and made sure that the southern border was completely porous for drugs, human trafficking, illegal, uh, basically ISIS, Hezbollah pouring across our southern border, you name it. Pregnant Chinese women was the thing for a while. But they don't get here because um, a fairy shows up at their house and brings them here from China, a pregnant woman. No, they get here because George Soros delivers them here. He delivers them to Mexico. This is a fact. We now know that there are ships delivering huge amounts of people, and it depends on what country they're coming from. And then we see a rush of people from that particular country, like we just saw a rush of people from Iran. How did they get here? Carrie made special passage for them on a ship when he did the deal. He brought in 1,500 or 2,500. John Kerry. John Kerry, spies from Iran. And then he brought in lots of uh, the, uh, what would be called the Iranian uh, Republican uh, uh, Guard. These are, this is Hezbollah. This is Hamas. This is ISIS. This is every type of radical Islamic fascist terrorist that you can imagine. Take a look at the people. Why do you think that those staged pictures never show you who's in the crowd? Guess what they were yelling down at the crowd? Muslim prayers as they pass by. Muslim prayers for people from Honduras? Really? People from El Salvador? People from Guatemala and Mexico? And why is the crowd answering back in union? 
Muslim prayers. Anybody ask these questions? Why don't we get a real picture? Let's get a close-up. And you will see that many of them have nothing to do with Mexico or Central America. They are directly from the Middle East, and this is an invasion. And if we do not stop it, folks, we are going to become the European Union. We've already seen it with the social media. We've seen it with election meddling. We've seen it with globalism being sold out to the United Nations and every other thing that Obama did. There was actually nothing Obama did that I ever saw that was that was not selling out America. So what do we have now? We need to stop this because George Soros is paying Mexico to do this. Yes, folks, it's real simple. The new guy who just came to power in Mexico, right? He is there because the drug cartels support him. He says he's going to give amnesty to the drug cartels. He says that it is the, remember, this is the same man who said during his election campaign, he said it is the right of every Mexican to storm America, to cross that southern border, to make all the money you can and send it back to Mexico. That is the platform he ran on. Now, if you don't think we're at war with Mexico, you're just simply blind, deaf, and dumb. You can't hear, see, and you're not thinking we are at a we are in a major war but wait let's think for a second have we been ripping off mexico and el salvador and honduras and guatemala oh yeah you want to talk about the cia and their manipulation of those elections in those countries so do we deserve some of the karma of this uh, caravan uh, invasion uh, perhaps but we should filter it out and find out its true sources. And all you have to do, folks, is use the satellites in the sky to identify the ships delivering these people to Mexico, see where they eat at night, and follow those trucks back to where they came from, where they got the supplies. It would have to be Mexico in direct alignment with George Soros, period. Same thing that happened in Europe. That's the reason they had a path. The path was from one camp to the next that George Soros set up and provided the people with a place to stay. Tents. Tents. They ha- they slept in tents. They were fed good food. They all have fresh water and they all have a day pack and they don't even have their clothes with them because once they get to America, they're going to be paid all along the way. Every single night that they continue their march, they are paid. They're going to come across the border with more money than many Americans have in their bank account. Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador were not able to do the job of stopping people from leaving their country and coming illegally to the U.S. We will now begin cutting off or substantially reducing the massive foreign aid routinely given to them. Nobody should be leaving any country without the permission of that country. That's the way it goes in every country in the world. We are not going to make any more exceptions. So they are aiding and abetting the invasion of America. They are sending us criminals that they know are criminals that well, makes them fighters. criminals. Those are fighters. I mean, you want if you have an army, you want to send the nasty guys. You want to take the MS-13. You want to take all the gangbangers. You want to take all the gangs and all of the criminals and release them on your enemy. And that's what we see. And that's why 65% of our prisons in America are filled with illegal aliens. And those are the very, very violent ones that we don't let out because they're usually the murderers. Well, they, um, it shows that this hurricane, Hurricane Willow, is, uh, could perhaps uh, take this swath of Mexico. But I don't think so because, you know, Mexico at that part is a desert. And I don't know how they're going to whip up that much rain and water for a hurricane that they believe will um, slow down this caravan. What do you think about that? Oh, well, obviously that was an engineered hurricane to hit the areas that are going to be affected by these migrants going through them. Well, there's some also some talk about what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico um, around the Texas border. There's some unusual rain activity there that looks very unnatural when you look at it through the satellite. Now, this is just a preliminary look I've seen this morning. These type of hurricanes are now engineered, as we pointed out, and you can bet that the person who planned this as an October surprise, who paid them to leave their countries, who paid them all along the way, also is connected to the same people who use the international channels to produce these hurricanes and to aim them. Why would they produce a hurricane to destroy the movement of this invasion? No, not to destroy it. It's to destroy the people in Mexico around it. Why don't the Mexicans 
come out and do anything. Why don't you see a single would Mexican? Would you? With this horde of invaders walking through your streets? I would be storming the capital of Mexico to say, get these people out of my country. Now, they aren't stealing anything. Notice that in the entire time, 24 million radical Islamic fascist terrorists went through Europe and not one single instance of them stealing a chicken or a cow or an apple. Well, look. Not one. Why? Because they were paid to do this. These are not people who are coming for work. They have their job. They're a George Soros political plant who is coming to destroy the country that he has sent them to destroy. It's as simple as that. And if we don't start an outright war against George Soros and his ships that deliver these migrants to Europe, and now they're delivering them to Mexico, we're not going to win the battle. We have to go towards the head of that snake and cut it off. Well, a good way to get to the head of that snake is by giving Trump a super majority at the midterms. And that's his next tweet. There's a big night in Texas because at the time that we're recording this, that event hasn't taken place. And goodness, there's 100,000 people that have signed up for this rally. And it's very exciting. But you know what's even more exciting is that this uh, uh, group of invaders seems to be headed towards Texas. And our guys in Texas and gals, it's open carry in Texas. I hope they're all packing. There's 100,000 coming to his talk with Ted Cruz. They all need to go to the border with their weapons and then take all those people, put them in FEMA camps, treat them as the criminals they are, not as people seeking asylum. They're not seeking asylum or else they would have applied for asylum. They have no papers. You can't get asylum without papers. Think about this. Not a one of them. They are all intent on their criminal activities. Lock them up in the FEMA camps for 20 years and I will bet there will not be another caravan. But I have said for a very, very long time, that the next tweet is true. Uh, but I also want to underscore the fact that Trump, as I've said so many times, is the best leader of his party, the MAGA party, that we've ever seen in history. And if people are not, people are not going to believe the fake votes if Republicans aren't elected. It's as simple as that. Everybody's watching. It'll still be partially rigged. But we are going to see a red tsunami because Trump is out there creating that tsunami. And if you don't think that's a tsunami, show me any other time in history that that many people showed up for any politician ever. No, what we have is the greatest political movement that ever happened in America. Well, that's history. because we're having to protect our country. Um, for too many years, we've allowed these globalists to take advantage of us and nip away at the foundations of America until we're at the state that we are today. The final tweet today is shock report, U.S. paying more for illegal immigrant births than Trump's wall. I've said this for decades. Sanctuary cities, sanctuary states, uh, California alone, Every year, they go completely bankrupt on a number of fronts that with water, with their fires, with their mudslides, and with the births of their migrant workers who have no prenatal care, and oftentimes, on an average, cost between one to two million dollars to deliver their children. As this report says, I can guarantee you that it's way more than $26 billion we pay for the delivery of illegal alien children who then become anchor babies, then we have to pay 100% of their medical costs. There's no American that gets that. There's no citizen in America that gets 100% of their medical costs covered. But if you are an illegal alien who's come to this country and you are pregnant and you have a baby and it's premature and that baby's in the hospital for the first three months costing U.S. taxpayers millions of dollars, I want to know how anybody justifies that. And the deal is, is it is criminal the way that California treats these migrant workers. They give them temporary homes, they give them temporary schools, and then they give them full medical care. But they don't insist that they get prenatal care. They don't take, those pregnant women are uh, in the field working with sarin nerve gas, which literally kills them if they expose their skin to this. People don't understand what's going on in California. We basically have a slave state out there. And because of that slave state, 
Then you have the people at the top who are basically the plantation owners demanding everything uh, because they also see that the slaves are doing their work for them. Well, those slaves are going out and working in fields where if they take off their protective suits, they die instantaneously because of the sarin nerve gas that's put on the root vegetables. Now that sounds awfully exaggerated, I am not exaggerating. There have been many deaths of people. They have to put on these what look like hazmat suits when they work on uh, particularly uh, pineapples, carrots. I thought uh, that carrots. was for the gly- glyphosates. That, that's also for the glyphosates. I'm not even counting the glyphosates. I'm counting sarin nerve gas that is used as an herbicide, I mean a pesticide, on root vegetables in California. And you have to put on a hazmat suit, complete hazmat suit to work in these fields. And when you come in, you have to wash the suit before you take it off. There have been many people who couldn't read even the Spanish that uh, was up on the wall, and they uh, they took their they 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 took the gloves off and t- took started to take their suit off before they hosed themselves down in a shower. They died from the contamination of touching the suit. This is no exaggeration. Sarin nerve gas is leftover World War II gas that the United States government has allowed to be used. In the fields in California. Why? Why would you need that to grow produce? Well, because it's excellent at killing bugs. Also, sarin nerve gas is used in almost every expensive perfume. Oh, don't let's not go down the perfume thing because I know that'll take you forty minutes to describe. Yeah. Okay. Hey, now let me else? just go on. Yes, if they would give them proper medical condi- medical care, these emergencies wouldn't be happening. And if these women were not out working in the field up until the moment of the birth, then you would not be having pre- so many, many horrifying birth problems. I mean, the percentage is like 85% of these workers, these migrant um, seasonal workers that come to California and act- the women who work in the fields and they have babies, 85% of them have horrible situations and we pay every single penny of it. They don't pay one dime, not one dime. You can't get that if you're an American citizen. I've been screaming about this for decades and California is, as far as I'm concerned, the realm of the devil because they crucify these people as slaves out in their fields. And then the uh, the rest of what they do, we don't even want to get into that. Don't get me started on that because these fires could be avoided, as Trump has pointed out. Everybody said he was crazy. No, Everybody knows that. The water that's being dumped into the ocean needs to be turned around and used properly. The water shouldn't be sent to cities so that the cities could all have nice green lawns of of rye grass that doesn't even grow anywhere in California. Have nice deserts. Stop using the water for your swimming pools. Stop using the water improperly. What's going to happen, and we've already seen this, the FEMA camps were set up in Southwest America because they planned on the southern part of California going dry. And it almost happened not long ago, a couple of years ago, and then they got the biggest storms they've well, the ever had. The camps are all around the country. They're not just down there. I know, but the big ones are down there because they're out in the open and they're in warm areas where you don't have to have any shelter. Oh, okay. Well, then that's good because when they round up all these invaders, they can just throw them in the local FEMA camps. The uh, Jade Helm uh, 2015 uh, military exercises were to prepare for the eventuality of complete drought in Southern California and the migration, literally this time a true migration, of millions and millions and millions of people. And they didn't know what they would do with them. So they built these FEMA camps. They actually have all the medical supplies. They have uh, storage uh, storage of food. They have places where they can grow their own food. And, and they are prisons. And there's, they've never been used. They're just sitting there. Many military bases were, were transformed into the same thing. Those are there because California is planned to simply go the way of the desert again, go back to the desert. And that is the reason that the southwest part of California and, uh, and also Florida is the second one, but California has more um, uh, chemtrails and more... Um, weather engineering than any other place in America because they're trying to stop these droughts. And what happens then? Then they get the floods and then they get too much water and then they get the... So one way or the other, it's either a desert or it's a flood in California and it's a mess and we need to stop messing with the weather there and we need to stop this horrible 
enslavement of women migrant workers that then cost as much as it would cost to build the entire border from tip to toe, $26 billion. That's one year for these women's births that we, the people, pay for. Okay, so we're finished with the tweets. Um, Anything else on your mind? Wrap it up, take it home for us. Oh, I just want to say that um, this is good that this is happening at this time because now anyone who believes in the demon rats and the Democrats who really want open borders will go on down there and greet that 10,000 group of people coming across the border. That's my advice to you. Anyone who wants to vote Pelosi, Democrat, anyone who wants to vote for any Democrat what is voting for open borders. You're voting for crime. You're voting for You're de- voting ISIS. for the destruction of America is what you're voting for. Why don't you just write in George Soros' name? Yeah. That's what you should do. George Soros for president. Because if you're voting for Democrats, you're voting for George Soros. And whether you know it or not, the reason you're so angry is because you're being subliminally programmed. And when you awaken from that subliminal programming, from that 